Howdy, da baba boo boo kins. How are you today? It's me, Vermin Supreme. I'd like to welcome you as the first commenter of the day. You did not even have to type in the word first. Logan Elias, hello there. How are you? Um, I can't even imagine why uh, autocorrect would make vermib a word, but maybe it is. B. Gregory, hello, Vincent. Hi, greetings to you. Um, welcome, all you beautiful and random people. Glad you can make it here today. Of course, it's uh, high noon with uh, Vermin Supreme. Vermin Supreme, that's me. High noon is the time here on the uh, eastern seaboard of the uh, great country America, United States thereof. Naturalist capitalist, that's a very good uh, observation. And um, yes, today is a very special episode, meaning it's not terribly special, but due to circumstances, it's a somewhat unusual episode in that it is raining outside. It's a rainy day here in Cape Ann. And as a result, um, I'm doing some errands and um, I am at my nephew's house doing some laundry and um, right pump. And um, so it's that chopping wood to carry water. You got to chop the wood and carry the water uh, in order to uh, maintain our lives. Tommy uh, Yang is waiting for vermin. Wait no longer. Here I am. Um, and, of course, it's a, an unusual, I won't say special. I mean, well, I'll, I'll say special. It's a very special episode. But uh, really, I'm just means that it's uh, unusual, different, and I'm hyping it as special. Um, it's a special episode because I forgot my Vermin Supreme glass pipe, the one that looks like me. And so instead, today, we will be smoking from my little one hitter uh, bat that looks like a cigarette. It's nowhere near as exciting, but it will serve the purpose to get those cannabinoid receptors firing. Schmoopsy, how are you? It's good to see you. It's been a long time. Uh, nice to uh, see your uh, name float across my screen. Uh, Tony Johnson, I believe that I am glitching. Um, but uh, luckily not a seizure, just a little glitch. Uh, let's see here. Shwoopsie Q, yeah, well, uh, it would not surprise me if we did not have a party before the summer is over, uh, now that COVID has been cured. Thank you, Joe Biden. Ha, 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 ha. Eh, shmoops. Um, oh, shmoopsie Q, baby, I love you. Ha, <laughs> ha. Anyway, I believe it's going to be a shorter type of a show here show here today um, because I will be switching my laundry over and it's a little more boring and I can't walk around. And uh, But I do have a, some very special, special uh, things to share with you today. So let's do the thing. Um, got the weed. Got the one hitter, also known as a bat in some circles. Perhaps the bat. Maybe this is the bat that bit Joe Jorgensen. I don't know. Maybe this is the bat uh, that uh, created the transfer to of COVID. We don't know, but this is a bat. I don't think it's either of those things. Um, whoa, Jesus, all sorts of fucking comments flying by. It's like that last thing I did on Facebook. So many comments. And I scrolled down, tried to address the comments, and I was like, got 10 minutes behind, 15 minutes behind. I was lagging in real time. All right. So hopefully we're not glitching too much. Um, all right. Not out of weed anymore. Good for you, Tony Johnson. And I'll assume that double negative implies that you got the weed. So here we go. Here we gar. What the fuck? Oh, did I mention I had a drink before the show? That's very seldom. That's what makes it a very special episode here today is that I had a little bit to drink, and I usually do not. So that's very exciting. Very exciting. 
uh, for me. I hope it's exciting for you. And um, let's get down to the smoking of the weed. B. Gregory, that's a very good question. What strain am I smoking? Uh, traditionally, um, my friend hooks me up with the starts, and I, I like I, I grow my own, of course, because this is Massachusetts, and we can legally do so, and it's awesome. Um, we can grow up to six plants per person, 12 per household, uh, and possess up to nine ounces of dried flour, I guess. And, and then once again, of course, those numbers are flowering plants. You could have six flowering plants and uh, a million unflowering plants. So that's a good question. Um, and so by the time the season is all over, by the time I've cured it, by the time a year goes by, I've pretty much lost track of what strain it is. Easton King, have I ever tried DMT? Yes, I have. And as far as uh, tripping out, um, I would definitely do DMT again. Um, LSD and the mushrooms just take too long. They sort of incapacitate me for like uh, a little bit longer than I care to be. And... Um, Whereas the DMT is quick and dirty, and you get right down to it, and uh, and then you come out. Like it better than the salvia? Yeah, try the salvia, too. Um, it was an interesting experience, but not completely pleasant. Um, but it was an interesting psychedelic experience, for sure. But the DMT, um, yes, I would definitely do it again. Uh, quick, down, dirty, all of a sudden, boom, you're trippy, woo! And then you're not. So, um, yeah, whereas if you're, like, on some other, like, LSD or something. It, it's a serious uh, time and uh, emotional brain commitment. All right. Um, smoke a little weed, I guess, huh? Not to say that I haven't already, but let's do some, eh? Very special episode. If you were paying attention, I was lighting the wrong end. <laughs> okay, we're up to a riff on start, and now the proper end is too hot to put in my mouth. Um, oh, let's see. Easton King has a geopolitical question. Dude, hold on, hold on. I'll, I'll be right with you. Let me think about that. See if I even want to answer a political question like that. Man, there's my poker. All right. Easton in Saudi Arabia. Wow. Now, the Saudi deployment is an interesting turning point in uh, U.S. military policy, I believe, although ultimately if you dig down, it's not really. And that's uh, using the U.S. military as a protector of resources, uh, which is, of course, a thing that the U.S. has done for many years, uh, invading or stabilizing or... Uh, going into countries, of course, the uh, rallying cry of the uh, anti-war left for many years was no blood for oil, um, although I do believe that some uh, wise asses have actually come up with a mathematical and economic uh, comparison uh, which compares the price of blood and oil. Um, in fact, the, the, the Saudi deployment, uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, was indeed a uh, Trump era policy, and I believe it essentially stated very clearly that the U.S. military, and once again, of course, the uh, United States military industrial complex uh, has been fine with uh, selling weaponry, which is uh, just uh, the way global capitalism works on, on that level. Um, and, uh, you know, so I, and so I think the selling weaponry, well, okay, that's part of the foreign policy that the government engages in and, and sells uh, all sorts of deadly killing military hardware to various allies, uh, a.k.a. countries that uh, the U.S. 
agrees with or has formed some sort of strategic alliance. Uh, I believe that the difference with the, the um, Saudi deployment clogged like a pipeline, seems to be that um, it was a sort of a quid pro quo situation, a statement, a clear, clear, clear statement that the U.S. military was for hire, was a mercenary force, um, in that the Saudi government, from my understanding, which again, could, could be a little off, uh, guaranteed the the financial requirements and hopefully a little bit of a profit uh, needed to protect the oil fields. So once again, I'm, I'm not sure which particular, um, and, and this is where I'm, I might, I'm not totally informed, is, is it uh, uh, nationally, are they owned by the nation state of Saudi Arabia or are they subcontracted to uh, multinational oil corporations? So that's, um, that's a question which I'm not totally clear on, but in either case, it seems to me that the Saudi deployment, uh, of which you are apparently involved in, and hopefully will serve no repercussions from asking uh, some very simple questions about it, um, would indicate that, yes, the military of the U.S. is open for hire as private security contractors to allies, a.k.a. countries with which we have some sort of relationship with, once again, because the Saudi kingdom is a very authoritarian uh, kingdom and it completely, it very much restricts uh, the rights of uh, women and uh, certainly uh, the LBG uh, community, etc., GSMs, uh, gender sexual minorities, and the like. And so I think it's really sketchy. I think it's a really sketchy operation, quite frankly. Uh, Tony Johnson, yes. Like I say, I don't like to get uh, too political. I don't do political podcasts these days, and I certainly don't want to become one. However, uh, it is Memorial Day. It is a day in which we uh, pretend, or, or many people do, and I, as a nation, um, you know, look at those who have indeed... Uh, ended up getting killed uh, for their country or democracy. Yeah, public headed in Saudi and uh, and we're okay with, uh, you know, implicitly, the, the implicit approval of their society seems to be given by the U.S. government that allows itself to be pimping out its military. Oh, it's not Memorial Day. Okay, fine, thank you. Yes, Nate Higgins. Oh, Nate Higgers, fuck you, dude. Your, your name is terrible. Spoonerisms suck. And I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm sure you're a nice guy, but also why would you have a fucking goddamn racist motherfucking name like that and all that it implies? But thanks for tuning in, fucker. Logan, it's true. Monday is Memorial Day. Um, Logan Elias asking me if I listen to Phil Collins. Not so much. Uh, from only accidentally and incidentally. Um, all right. Easton Kling, I, I hope you'll speak about it and speak out about it when you are in, uh, in a situation where you actually can do that without uh, repercussions. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and uh, once again, sorry for any losses you may experience, uh, any vets out there, um, sorry for any losses that you have experienced, and uh, I certainly hope that you have gotten the help that you deserve, um, and if any help that you need, and it's out there, and don't be ashamed of, uh, of checking in with the mental health uh, system in order to uh, deal with any situations that you may have been involved with that are ha just not having a... a time to process. God damn, this pipe sucks. Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab a one of my nephew's pipe and smoke out of here. Yeah.
All right. Here, check this one out. That's pretty cool, right? Maybe some sort of, looks like a hermit crab or something. Anyway, let's uh, fill it up. Smoke some weed. I should go check the laundry. All right, that's better. Let me uh, check the comments real fast here. <coughs> All right. Dylan Geyser, have you got third place in votes for president in uh, six elections in a row? I have come in third and fourth in the New Hampshire primary. Um... Who is my all-time favorite band or artist? S.B. Gregory. Uh, there are so many uh, talking heads coming to mind. Sly and the Family Stone, Gang of Four, um, all of those. Uh, Rich Clark, best way to memorialize our fallen soldiers is working to ensure that no more die in foreign wars. Absolutely, 100%. Uh, Nate Higgers. Um, I probably, I, I don't know how to do that on my phone, but the fuck ever. Unfortunately, you know, I've got horrible racist and authoritarian fans. Um, and I believe that they know deep down that I am in total disapproval of their horrible belief systems. Um, and But I do have hope for people that they will transform and change and become better people and more compassionate people and more loving people. Okay, so let's go uh, switch the laundry over, shall we? So I'm indoors and walking through. Uh, we're back. I, I had to go into the cellar to do the um, switch the laundry over. And it looks like we lost uh, quite a few viewers, which is too bad. Um, uh, Rich Clark, fact, fact, that's true. The, the, the all 5G, this is my own personal 5G tower here. Um, I wear the 5G tower on my head at all times. All right. All right, where are we? I guess uh, I guess this is essentially a, a new live stream, part of the same live stream, a continuation. I'm not sure if I get to talk, uh, not answer the questions that were asked, or if those people are still on board. Uh, let's see, but we'll scan, we'll scan through, see if there's anything I want to answer. Uh, Easton King asking about AI and quantum computing. Um, pretty exciting and pretty scary. Science uh, at its finest and most frightening potential. All right. Johnny Coolwater, welcome back. Glad to see you. Glad you made it. Or I don't even know if you're still on anymore because we lost a little signal as I went to change the laundry over. Dylan, uh, of course I would wear this boot if I was president. I'd wear it in the White House. No reason why not. I'd already be elected. What the hell? Let's see. Rich Clark, am I accustomed to life with the boot? Yes, very. I'm very used to the boot. Uh, same boot? No, nah, it's a slightly different boot. Sometimes they get worn out, but it's, it's the same, same spirit. Possessed by the same demons, let us say. Okay. Uncomfortable truth. Uh, Arvin, is that you? Okay. Uh, duh, 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 favorite strain, duh, 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 duh. blah, 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 alien invasion, separated colors, no, I do not, uh, not usually, is the stream frozen, or is it you, Robert Wood, yes, it's you, um, okay, well, anyway, I'm back, and let's see if anybody's, uh, if we're totally back, we're, we're up to full strength here.
Dylan, Biden as a weak leader. Um, uh, he, the, I missed that part. No, I, I missed the response. I missed the question. So, uh, but it is certainly arguable. He's not a fucking super strong man. I mean, when he was a kid, yeah, he was a fucking motherfucker. But now he's an old man. But, uh, you know, a lot of presidents get to be old, man, if we're lucky, you know. Once again, is he a statist cuck? Yes. Is he a scumbag? Yes. Am I going to defend him? No. Is he weak? Yes. Okay, there we go. All right. Yeah, me too, Tony Johnson. Okay, I'm glad you tuned back. Um, let's see. Vermin and Ralph Nader. I did meet Ralph Nader once. He said some nice things about me. Uh, he was included, uh, giving a quote about me in the 96 documentary, Why Can't I Be President? Uh, so let's see. Uh, party humanist pragmatique asking me about what I think about Andrew Yang. Hey, he seems like a nice enough guy with all his baggage and situations. And uh, if people want to sign up for that, um, you know, is, is the mayor's race as exciting as his presidential run? Eh, not so much, I don't think. T -t 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 Johnny Coolwater, so true. Tommy Yang, do I watch the Liberty Report? Nah. Do I sleep with the boot? Yeah. All right. Let's see here now. Oh, yeah. And uh, there are some arguments to be made, even from a libertarian perspective. If you go all Georgist, uh, I'm not particularly familiar with the Georgist, but Judge Jim Gray was indeed pr uh, promoting a uh, negative income tax, which was very close to a UBI. Uh, in some perception fields, and um, who's going to pay for it, man? Who's going to build that UBI? I do not know. However, once again, if we cut out the military, then by golly, then there's plenty of money for everybody that came from taxes. Taxes are theft. Okay, dabba dibble dibbled up. Um, I do not mind you asking me how old I am. And I am turning 60, which is old and young. Sort of like a Schrodinger's age. Emperor Final, happy high noon. Easton King, of course I do. Do I think military members should have access to weed if it's legalized in their state? Yes, I do. And hopefully the feds will legalize it eventually. Would I buy Malice's new book? Did I buy? No, I did not. I don't think that would purely interest me, but I'll look at a synopsis maybe someday, and yes, good morning, Anthony Bradbury, uh, welcome to the show, um, unfortunately, I couldn't find my, I, I did give my nephew uh, one of your fine pipes for, um, for his birthday, but I couldn't find it to smoke out of it, I'm at my nephew's house doing some laundry. Uh, it's raining outside, so it's going to be a short show. Um, so I'm smoking out of this other uh, cute little pipe. Oh, I think looking at it, it's actually an elephant. Yes, I see it now. It's an elephant trunk, elephant ears, four legs. Um, totally an ele elephant butt. Um, totally an elephant. So it's a very special uh, episode today in that we're inside that I'm smoking out of a different pipe. Okay, it's, I don't know if it's special, it's just different. It's about the same, I guess. Hello, Sheriff Lee Gray. Hmm. Pixies and fairies in the woods. I'll have to go look for some uh, some of those. All right. Smoke some more weed, people. Here we go. Hold on tight. Bing bong. Hi, noon. Oh, you know what? 
I remember what was going to make this a very special episode. <coughs> because uh, back in the day, yes, I don't think it's a secret. I think if you go to my wiki page, um, you'll see it says I went to art school, and I did. And really the only reason I did was because I could draw and paint a little bit. And my stupid guidance counselor did not ask me any hard questions like, how are you going to make a living doing art? Or are there other things that you could do with your skill set? Um, but no, no. So I, I, I did go to art school and I did have some art lessons and I did some art. So I'm going to show you a little bit of art. Um, that I did back in the day. So hold on there tight. But first I want to say hello to Arkertz from Argentina. Uh, worst uh, economic crisis. Uh, let's see. Oh, goodness. This is a real geopolitical question. Mr. Well, I already answered one geopolitical question. So let's look at this one. Um, greetings from Argentina. We have lots of socialism there, and we are in the worst economic crisis. How can I persuade people to not be with the people who are destroying my country. And, and I'm going to assume that you're talking about the socialists, and I'm, well, no, let, let's just assume, let, let's state for fact that you're talking about the government, because the government is really the only uh, power in power that can uh, make such powerful decisions as to which economic policies that a country is following, although it is arguable that, uh, you know, the, the corporations could have a big hand in that. Um, so let's, let's, let's just uh, state for the, for the record, obviously, it's the government that is creating the problems and their, the government's policies. Um, the individuals who consider themselves this, that, or the other thing, I suppose they ultimately contribute by voting the government in or supporting the government. Uh, but ultimately, they are not the ones in power and do not have the power of implementing <coughs> said political uh, operations. Um, so I guess the only thing is that we can all do is sort of fly under the ra radar and uh, try and um, engage people on a level of uh, what that uh, is underneath or beyond the government's control. Uh, and economically, that would be... Uh, trading or uh, gifting or uh, bartering or exchanging goods and or services for goods and or services um, like that. And of course, uh, if, to resist, uh, I guess there's uh, tax avoidance and, and tax resistance uh, um, and protest on, on any variety of levels. And of course, uh, creating uh, systems uh, that show the error in the governmental way, ideally creating mutual aid networks, which are always a good thing uh, under socialism and or capitalism, um, and creating systems whereby we are uh, engaging with and helping one another and helping each other and uh, negating the need uh, for the government to do so. And... Um, Yes, I mean, I'm assuming socialism in this instance means the uh, government control of the economy. Sounds familiar. And the um, government, the nationalization of business assets, means of production. I don't know, what the fuck. Well, that's why I don't do freaking political podcasts. Uh, I've got to pretend to have answers. Once again, it was one of the fun things about being in the debates of uh, the libertarian presidential primaries uh, because not only did I get to answer such questions, but I used to pretend, uh, have to, pr force to pretend that those were the answers and the answers that, uh, that I totally uh, was presenting and believed in. No problem, uh, Akertz. It was, it was a good question. Um, so I just wanted to give a, give a little bit of thoughts on it. Uh, yes, 60% uh, of, of poverty, lots of children with hunger, and that is certainly a terrible situation, uh, as are the people on the margins and those who have been cut out and left out of uh, prosperity. And it is arguable that capitalism has created uh, uh, wealth and brought people up out of poverty. I've seen stats, uh, but 
Uh, there may be other ways, too. Derek, thank you for that absentee ballot vote uh, last year. Appreciated it. Ultimately, uh, means very little or nothing, but I, I do appreciate that uh, effort that you made. Robert Wood, observing terrible people do terrible things, regardless of their political or economic ideology. Um, yep, that's true. True, true, true. But uh, let's all be on the optimist side and uh, think, look at the best in people and be the best in the people and do the best as the best people we can be. Uh, and... India in the house, Pune, Sarika, hello. Uh, waffles are just pancakes with abs. Um, that seems to be the official Indian government position. Uh, good luck with uh, all that crazy shit we hear about in India going on right about now, COVID-related. Ah, uh, Tony Johnson, good point. Uh, yeah, where this government come from? Who asked us to be, uh, if we wanted to be governed? Uh, Easton King, uh, oh, why do I think classical psychedelics are schedule one, uh, whereas meth and opium are schedule number two? Uh, obviously, I think the state has a seriously concern of people whose minds have been opened and uh, what they might do. Uh, Tommy Yang, can I give a, a tour of the house? I don't think I'll be doing that. I don't, I don't want to uh, impose or uh, overstep my boundaries as a guest in my nephew's house. Um, it was indeed my mother's house. Um, this is where she uh, lived out her later years. Um, so there are many bittersweet memories of uh, caring for my mother uh, as she went downhill uh, in this house. Uh, Joni Coolwater, thanks for your input. America has a lot of brainwashed fools who don't understand or study the history of socialism and are leading us into disaster. Yeah, there's that. That's, uh, you know, as an anarchist, and, uh, you know, I try and be consistent, although it's very hard to be so, uh, as we're all hypocrites in our own happy little ways and stuff. Uh, but I think being comfortable with that is, uh, is a big part and important. Um, but, yes, um, but once again, it's is it the problem? Is the government the problem? Is, is the government, government is the problem? Let me state that. Don't ask that stupid question. Pa, 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 pa. Well, yeah, well, once again, no real capitalism and or socialism has ever really been tried. No, not pure. Oh, nor anarchism for that matter, I guess. I don't know. What the fuck ever. What do I care? Pa, 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 pa. Let's see. How much money are we investing in the takeover of Vatican City? Loop, good question. No answer for you there. Um, Augie A, do I ever regret turning Randall Terry gay? No, uh, not at all. Uh, because uh, that was the moment where I became a meme, and that was almost 10 years ago. 10 years of a meme, and that is like about a million years in regular human ter uh, terms. Ah, uh, Johnny Coolwater, here we go. That's a, uh, uh, definitely a very uh, important difference to point out. Despite all its flaws, yeah. despite all its flaws, capitalism is the best form he knows of, uh, jo that Johnny knows of. Uh, uh, just studying what happens in social countries. Crony, cat crony, to the point that uh, a lot of people from the left, uh, when they own, uh, capitalism or, or what, once again in 2012 you, you'll come up with quotes where I clearly state that I'm anti-capitalist and because I wasn't open enough uh, or subtle enough or nuanced enough to be able to uh, embrace the idea that uh, uh, regular capitalism it, it totally distorts the playing field so that's that's a damn fact crony got good uh, may I see the permit to your lemonade stand, please? Uh, I ran Contra. Uh, let's go. Wow. Hypothetically, Liberty, you want me to go back, way back in time there. Oliver North, uh, I ran Contra. Um, 
Ronald Reagan. Oh, my goodness. I don't know if I'm going to go back that far in time. Although I remember it uh, well. Uh, she was a wonderful mother. Uh, we had a wonderful... Dylan, guys, are an interesting question. What sensation do I feel inside whenever I, you reply you're an anarchist? I feel like an anarchist. <laughs> In a mild... Uh, or you, it's, it's always, you know, you always say what you think that you are. And that's what I think they am. Or, or like what you'd like to think that you are. Um, even though, once again, I'm comfortable with my hypocrisies. I have tons of, of nuances. And, and I definitely look at things from different issues and angles. Ah, uh, shit. All right. Well, I think... Uh, I th oh, I, I, I said I was going to show you some artwork. Okay, let's take it back around. And um, I'm going to show you a, a painting that I did. Self-portrait. These are three self-portraits um, that my nephew has uh, kept. So here we go. That is me as best as I could paint what I looked like um, in high school. So I, I think I sort of looked like that. And this was a uh, young me in college uh, when I, it was a drawing assignment and it was a uh, cross hatching which is sort of sucks, but um, there I was as best as I could draw what I looked like looking in a mirror, apparently. As you can see, my hair was very long. And then, ha <laughs> ha this one, I think I was on Acid. Uh, when I when I painted that one, ooh, look, it's vermin on acid. Ooh, oh, 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 oh. and of course I was loving my colors. So this is the kind of quality content that generally doesn't get shared on uh, High Noon with Vermin Supreme. This is the kind of archival content uh, that is usually reserved for my uh, patron members. If you ever want to join the uh, patreon.com slash Vermin Supreme, we do uh, monthly uh, Zoom meetings and we do uh, all sorts. Of, and I, I dig out archival crap and tell stories uh, related to um, archival crap and things. So this is totally belongs in there. So if you got five or ten bucks a month to kick down uh, to help the Vermin Supreme Institute uh, proceed with its mission of, do, of instituting things, um, you should do that. And of course, uh, if you need a cameo, cameo.com slash Vermin Supreme. Uh, to give messages to your friends and loved ones and enemies and whoever else. Um, but I definitely do the cameos and the, the cam all cameo proceeds go to the Vermin Supreme Institute. So check out VerminSupremeInstitute.com, VerminSupremeInstitute.com to see what we're up. We, we got content. We got people writing stuff. So please tune in and read what they write. Okay, Vermin Supreme institute.com go to vermin supreme.com vermin supreme.com if you need any merchandise the vermin supreme glass pipes are gonna be there they might be there already if you need stickers and stuff they're probably there um and like that uh this memorial day weekend of course um if you're one of the, the vets who follow my zany hijinks uh Please uh, welcome home. I'm sorry for your losses. If you experienced any losses during your service, and uh, reach out and get the help that you may need to help process some of the shit that you 
have dealt with that might not have had the opportunity to do so for various reasons. Everybody else, be kind, rewind. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, all the other things, uh, mutual aid, blah, blah, blah. If you see a, something that needs fixing in your world, uh, make it happen. Change it. Change it for the better. Uh, do the things that need to be done. Get, get in touch with the people you need to. Find your friends. Find, find your allies. Find the people that are working on similar projects and, and, you know, get it together and, and, uh, make that happen. And, uh, wow. Oh, jeez, okay. And so I, I guess I'm trying to wrap it up here and uh, wind it down. So, uh, yeah, so once again, of course, this was a, a very special episode of High Noon with Vermin Supreme. And... Uh, Vermin Supreme, and thanks for tuning in. And if you need a cameo, cameo.com slash vermin supreme, patreon.com slash vermin supreme. If you want to uh, join the High Rollers Club, as you uh, can imagine, all the perks and benefits of that. And I'm all over your social media and high noon every noon and uh, so uh, uh, keep it together and uh, yeah do something nice today call up somebody you ain't talked to in a while you know at the least do what you do you are love I'm sorry to give you all my the affirmations but if you need affirmations uh, know that you are a beautiful person, that you're a special person, that I care for you, and uh, and so do others. And uh, you are loved, you are lovable, you are capable of experiencing love, and you are capable of love. So take care and um, all those things. Guess I'll be signing off. Oh, and if you didn't see my last uh, Facebook uh, live episode, there was a fox like this. I imagine it was probably a rabbit. It was really tame, um, but it was really cool. So we'll see you later then. All right. Um, Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, bye, bye. No, no, no. You hang up first. No, no, no. I, I, I want you to hang up first. All right. Well, I'm gonna hang up now. Okay. No, you, no, you, no, you hang up. No. no. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna hang up now. All right. Take care, everybody. Peace out. Okay, I'm, I'm hanging up now, totally. I'm going to hang up.